Hey guys, this is Mrs. Turner. Welcome back for another math lesson where today we're going to continue practicing what we've learned so far about a coordinate plane. So as you can see here, I have a Google Slides pulled up. Whenever you do your independent assignment today and you click on the link, it's going to look very similar to this. It's going to bring you to a page where you're going to be asked to first click on this blue button to make your own copy. You won't be able to get to the assignment until you click on that blue button. You also need to make sure that you are logged in with your student Google account that you've been using since school began. Um, otherwise, I may not be able to see your activity um, when you're finished, okay? So make sure you're logged in with Google and make sure you click on the blue button that says make a copy. All right, so I'm going to do that now. Click make a copy. And depending on your internet connection, it could take a minute or two to load. Let's see. It's trying. There we go. All right, so this first page here, uh, if you remember from Monday when I first taught you guys how to do this, you're going to click here where it says type here. Click and a blue box is going to show up and I need you to type in your name. So Adrian, I'm going to borrow your name for a moment. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so type in your name and then out beside that, you would be super duper awesome if you would type in your homeroom teacher's name as well. Uh, so Turner, Towery, or Golding. That'll just help me um, be able to sort these faster and grade them and get your scores back to you. So name, a uh, homeroom teacher's name, for date, you need to click here, and then when that blue box pops up, you are good to start typing. And the date that you will be completing this assignment on is September 2nd. So you can type in 9-2, you can type in September 2nd like this. Um, I'm not real picky on how you do it, just make sure you do type in the date. That way you get credit for doing the assignment on the day that it was given, okay? So if you do this a few days later, you're not putting in September 2nd, you're putting in the actual date that you did it. That way I can keep track of, you know, when you got your assignments completed and stuff like that. So you're gonna put the date in. And then also while you're at it, come up here, see where it has all of these long words here, copy of copy of coordinate plane. Uh, what you wanna do right there is have your name inside this little box. So when I click, you can see a little box shows up and it says rename. So I'm gonna click here. And I want to get rid of all of these words here. And you're just going to type in whatever you did for your name. So if you type in, like Adrian would have typed in turn or Adrian dash Turner, um, that's all you need to type in there. At least just make sure you put your first name in that box, okay? Um, and then we do have some name twins in fifth grade. We have a couple Annabelles, we have a couple Alexes. Uh, so make sure you also put the first letter of your last name so I can tell you guys apart. All right, so once you've done all this, you are ready to begin and start answering the questions. We're not going to click on the share button until we are done with the entire assignment and we are ready to submit it. So now let's go ahead and click on the very next page here or the very next slide. And we're ready to start answering these questions. Now for this question, you're going to have to use the line tool in Google Slides. Up here, this is where you can find the line tool, and I'm going to show you how to use that. So to use the line tool, you have to click here every single time you want to draw a line. So now that I've clicked there, you'll see it gives me this um, plus sign looking symbol. I can press my finger down and drag with the other finger while I'm still holding that finger down, and it's going to give me a line. I can use the blue dots here on the ends to click and drag and make the line longer. And I can also um, angle the line in different ways if I need to. And then if I want to delete the line while it's highlighted in blue, go to your keyboard and on the upper right hand side, you're gonna see a button with the word delete on it. Press that button and the line disappears. Every time you wanna draw a new line, you have to click on the line tool draw your line, and then whenever you're um, 
done with it or not done with it. That's not the correct way to say. Let's just say if you draw the wrong line and you don't need it anymore, click on the delete button and then it will go away. Okay. All right. So now that we know that, we're ready to answer question number one. Number one says, a map shows the locations of buildings at a school. Use the line tool to match each building to the correct ordered pair. So we're, let's start with the PE building. So we come over here to the coordinate plane. Here's the PE building. To get the ordered pair or the coordinates, we're going to do X first. So we're going to go down to the X axis. The X coordinate is 3. Then we're going to go across to the Y axis. The Y coordinate is 11. So for the PE building, we have the coordinates 3, 11. So now we need to draw a line from the PE building to the coordinates. So I click on my line tool, start here at PE, draw a line straight down to 311, okay? And then as long as I click somewhere else on the screen, that line is in there. Um, now, when I get close to that line, when I kind of hover over it here with my fingers on the, the keypad, um, I can click that line and I can move it around if I need to. And then I can still delete it even if I need to. Uh, so don't think that once it's there, it's permanent, okay? You can make changes to your answers if you need to. All right, so I'm gonna clear this off and let's do the next one. So let's do the office. Here's the office building on the coordinate plane. We're going to go down to the x-axis. The coordinate is 3. We're going to go across to the y-axis. The coordinate is 4. So for the office, we have the ordered pair 3, comma 4. So let's draw a line from the office to its ordered pair, which is straight across from it. How about that? All right, let's go ahead and do the next two here. We've got to do media and art. So media, we're going to find that here on the coordinate plane. Here it is. Let's go down to the x-axis. The coordinate is 6. Let's go across to the y-axis, and the coordinate is also 6. So for media, we get the ordered pair 6, 6. So let's go ahead and draw that line now. And then last but not least is art. So you might be thinking, oh, well, these are the last two left, so let's just go ahead and draw our line. That's not what we're going to do here, because if you made a mistake on any of these other answers, this is where we're about to find out if we made a mistake somewhere else. All right, so let's find the art building. Here it is. We're going to go down to the X coordinate, which is 7, across to the Y coordinate, which is 2. So that ordered pair would be 7, 2. Okay, and then when I click somewhere else, all of those lines are going to be saved. Remember, we talked about that on Monday. So even if I go to the next slide and go back to number one, your work is there. Your, your work is saved. Your answers are in there. You are good to go. So your answers are not going to magically disappear unless you click on something and start deleting your answers, which, of course, we're not going to do. All right, so let's look at number two here. It says, Kathy moved from one location to another by traveling four units left and two units down. Place an X next to the way that Kathy traveled. All right, so let me get my drawing tools here. So she traveled from one location to another. We have several locations here, but we have some answer choices to help us out because in the word problem, it doesn't tell us the locations. That's what you're having to figure out. But we do know that when she left one of these locations to get to the other one, she went four units left and two units down. So we're going to use these here as our answer choices to see which one um, will help us go four units left and two units down to get to the next location. Uh, so we're either going to do from home to school, from school to the library, from school to the park, or from the park to the store. So let's use those as our answer choices, and we're going to do some process of elimination here. So let's start with from home to school. Here's home. Here's school. So we need to go four units left and two units down. If we can leave home, follow those directions, and get to the school, then that first option will be your correct answer. So remember, we don't start at the origin when we're told otherwise. 
Here, we have been told otherwise. We have been told to start at home and go to school, so that's what we're going to do. So let's go uh, four units left. This is the left, by the way, and this is the right. So four units left. That looks like this. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. You see what happened here? We've already passed the school, right? The school is on this line right here. Four units left took us right beside the school. We don't want to be beside the school. We want to be at the school. So we know that this is not going to be our answer. Let's try the next one. From school to the library. So now I'm going to leave school and try to make it to the library. So remember, we're going to start by going four units left. So here's what four units left would look like. One, two, three, four. Ooh, so far so good. And then two units down. One, two. All right, so following those directions, we were able to make it from the school to the library. So that's probably going to be our answer. Let's test out the other ones just to be sure. Uh, so the next one says from school to the park. So we're going to leave school. We're going to try to make it over here to the park following these directions. So first, we go four units left. One, two, three. Four. Well, wait a minute. That took us away from the park. We were moving in the opposite direction. If we wanted to make it to the park, we should have either been going right first or going down first. So this actually is taking you away from the park. That's not going to be your answer. And then the last one, we are going from the park to the store. So here's the park and we want to make it to the store. So we're going to start by going four units left. One two, three, four. Uh-oh. Same thing that happened up here in green. Look, that puts us on this place right here. Imagine like this is a road. That puts you on this road right here. That's not where the store is located. So that is still not going to be your answer. Um, so whenever you find the one that is your answer, you're going to place an X next to the way that Kathy traveled. So we're going to take our X and we're going to drag it here in our second answer choice because we were able to have Kathy travel from her school to the library successfully when following these directions. Okay, so when you're done, yours is going to look um, similar to this right here. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next page here. I'm going to do all of these with you because when this video is over, you will have your own to do. Okay. Okay, so this one here is a little bit of a tricky one, okay? So stay with me. The directions for this one say, use the coordinate grid to solve the problem. After school, Eduardo decided to go to the park. Eduardo left the school, went down five units and right three units, and arrived at the park. Plot the location of Eduardo's school. Enter the coordinates. So for this one, we're going to have to work backwards here, okay? And the reason for that being is that he is starting at the school following these directions here to arrive at the park. So the school would be your start location. The park would be your end location. Well, we have the end location here on the coordinate plane. This is where the park is located. We don't have the starting position on the coordinate plane, which would be the school. Okay, so for that reason, we're going to have to work backwards. We're going to have to go in the opposite direction of what the directions tell us here in order to find where Eduardo started at school. Okay, the coordinates for the school. So, for example, when it says go down five units, we're actually going to leave the park and we're going to go up five units. So, if he's leaving the school and going down to get to the park, then that means the school is above the park. So, whenever we travel up on the coordinate plane and we're trying to find the school, that means the school will be above the park and that's what we want to happen. So, he went down five units. We're going to go up five units. One two, three, four, five. So that takes care of that direction. And then where it says go right three units, we're actually going to do the opposite. We're going to go left three units. One, two, three. So that puts the school 
right here okay so I'm gonna put an S here for school because I'm not ready to bring that over yet so I want to show you how working backwards put the school in the correct location so again when Eduardo leaves the school to get to the park he needs to go down five units based on where we put the school now he will have to go down in order to get to the park because the park is located below the school he also is going to go right in order to get to the park well where we put the school he will have to go right in order to get to the park so because we worked backwards we now have the school's correct location we can even test that out again just to be 100 percent sure that we do have the right answer and that never hurts to do you can test out your answer so he's going to leave the school and go down five units so leave the school and go down one two three four five then we go right three units one two three and look that took us to the park so working backwards to get to the school was the correct thing to do here so if it gives you the end location and you're having to find the start location that means you're going to work backwards if you're given the start location and you need to find the end location then you just go in the normal order um, that you typically would okay so now we know that the school belongs right here so i'm going to drag that over just like i taught you to do on monday i'm going to clear my drawings out all right so you can see where the school is now we just want to be able to enter the coordinates the ordered pair for the school so now that we know where the school is we're going to look down to the x-axis the coordinate is one we're going to look across to the y-axis the coordinate is six that gives us the order pair one comma six so we're going to type that in over here so i'm going to click so i can start typing delete the red hashtag type in one which is the x coordinate and always comes first delete the second hashtag type in six which is the y coordinate and always comes second and when we're done with this page it's going to look just like this we dragged the school to the correct location and we entered the ordered pair so if you haven't noticed yet so far um, this does differ from monday and that monday's activity when you did this um it was very much you know just drag and drop this here type in your coordinates and you're done for this one um there's a lot more work you have to do to even know where to drag and drop that point okay so my takeaway here that i'm telling you is that this should take you more than five minutes and it should probably take you more than even 10 minutes okay because you're really going to have to think you know based on the directions i've got here where does the school go and stuff like that and you're going to have to do that for a lot of these all right so let's go ahead and move on here to the next one okay so this one says the mayor plans to build a park halfway between the school and the post office enter the coordinates of the park all right so even though we do see some other locations here like the home and the gym and the store they're not needed we're just focusing on the post office and the school okay and it says he plans to build a park halfway in between them so when you think about a number line like let's think about one and three okay uh, so what comes halfway between one and three well of course we know the number two does so that means the number two is halfway from the one on the number line here's half the number line and then it's also halfway from the three so it's right in the middle so when you think of halfway here i want you to think what's in the middle of the post office and the school so the post office and the school here's the road in between them we want to find what's in the middle and then we'll write down the ordered pair so there's a couple of different ways that you can do this you could count how many units are there all together and then cut that in half that's one way to do it so that would look like this one two three four so all together between the post office and the school there are four units well what's half of four two 
is halfway four. So that means the park that the mayor plans to build should be two units away from the post office and also two units away from the school. So now let's just go down two units and see where we end up. So if I start at the post office and go down two units, one, two, I end right here on this line which means this is where the park is going to be. So based on where I'm wanting to put the park, it is two units away from the post office. Let's make sure it's also two units away from the school. One, two, yep, it's also two units away from the school. So it would be this purple point right here. So that's one way to figure it out. Here's another way that you could figure it out. Some of you might be able to just eyeball this. Like, you know when something looks like it's in the middle. Like, if I say, all right, guys, we're going to make a T-chart in our notebook paper, cut your paper in half. If you draw a line, like, over here, you realize, okay, these parts are not equal. One is much bigger than the other. So, you did not cut it in half. So, you can tell that when something is cut in half, it looks like a line of symmetry. It looks very evenly split down the middle so we have one half over here and then we also have one half over here so for some of you you might be able to eyeball this and go okay this looks about halfway down okay so that's a little bit less of what i would call a precise way of figuring it out uh, the last one i showed you where you counted the four units and then cut that in half that's a very precise and mathematical way of doing it this one is more you can eyeball it but you still want to make sure that this is halfway so we're still going to check our answer the same way we're going to start the post office and we're going to count down how many units it is to the park and it was two units same thing with the school. We're going to start at the school and count up to the park and see how many units it is. One, two. So since it matches, the park is two units from the post office and it's also two units from the school, we know that this is going to be the location of the new park. So again, when you think of this word halfway, think of in the middle. It has to be right there in the middle between those two locations. All right, and then of course now we want to know what are the coordinates for the park. So I'm going to use a different color, red. All right, so here is where the park is. To find the coordinates, we're going to go down to the x-axis and the coordinate is 4. Then we're going to go across to the y-axis and the coordinate is three. So we have to type in our answer here. There we go. When I see the flashing line, I'm ready to type. So that'll be four. Leave the comma in there. Don't delete it. Three. Four comma three. So when you're done, your page should look just like this one, and then you are ready to move on. So as you can tell, you didn't have to label the halfway point on the coordinate plane, but you did have to find it first in order to know what the ordered pair was going to be. So we didn't have to drag and drop a, a point over here, but you did have to figure that out using the strategies I showed you so you would know what the correct ordered pair would be. All right, let's move on to the next one here. So number five. Enter the ordered pair that represents the location of the gym. Explain a possible path from the gym to the post office. So this is kind of like what you guys were working on yesterday in my pre-recorded videos where I gave you a coordinate plane and said we need to find the pathway from A to E or from G to F. Okay, and we were, you know, discussing what steps we would take. Would we go up? Would we go down? Would we go left or right? So those are the type of things that we're going to be looking for here. Uh, so first, let's enter the ordered pair for the gym. So here's where the gym is located. To get the ordered pair, of course, we're going to go down to X first, and that is 4. Then we go across to the Y axis, and that is 3. So our ordered pair for the gym is going to be, let's type that in, 4, comma, Three. Okay, but now we need to type in this box here a pathway from the gym to the post office. So when we leave the gym, how are we going to arrive at the post office? And we've talked about this in some of my videos. We're not just going to say, oh, I cut straight across here and I drew a diagonal line to get to the post office. That is not explaining to me using your coordinate plane 
vocabulary how you got to the post office. I need to see words like x-axis and y-axis. I might need to see words like left, right, up, down. That's how you explain your pathway. All right, so let's talk about our possible pathways. And there's going to be more than one right answer. You only need to write one right answer. So we can leave the gym and we can go up and then to the right. Uh, we could leave the gym and we could go right and then we could go up. Now, of course, if you wanted to get real complicated, you could say, we're going to go left, then we're going to go up, and then we're going to go right. Or you could say, we're going to go down, then we're going to go to the right, then we're going to go up, and then we're going to go left. So yes, technically, those are possible pathways. But think about the type of pathways that we have been doing together. Our pathways have only been two steps, where you go right and then up or you go down and then you go left. So show me here when you do this activity on your own that you've been paying attention and you understand the types of steps that we're looking for in our pathway, okay? Don't make it complicated, keep it short and sweet, same way that we've been doing it in class all week. So the pathway that I'm gonna choose is to go up and then to the right. So first, how many units up did I go? One, two, three, Four. So I went up four units, and then how many units to the right did I go? One, right? So when I go to type in my answer, I'm going to click here. I'm going to delete these words, and then I'm going to type. And it doesn't even have to be complete sentences. It could be up uh, four units, comma, right one unit. See how simple that was? That's all I need you to type in. Up four units, write one unit, and then you are done with this question. Uh, so then whenever you are completely done with it, it's going to look something like this. You've got your ordered pair, and then you've also got your pathway from the gym to the post office. All right, let's keep going here. Number six, use the coordinate grid to solve the problem. After school, Heather decided to go to the gym. Heather left the school went up four units and right three units and arrived at the gym. Plot the location of Heather's school, enter the coordinates. Okay, so this is very similar to the last problem we did where we had to use the clues to find our start location. Uh, so just kind of reviewing this together, she left school and then she's making her way to the gym. So technically we are starting at the school and we are ending at the gym. Okay, so we're starting at school, ending at gym. So the gym here on the coordinate plane is already labeled for us, but this is your end point. We need to find what was our start point. So do you remember what to do when you're solving for your start point? You're gonna have to work backwards. So when it says up four units, do the opposite of up and go down. When it says write three units, do the opposite of right and go left, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to do that here again. All right, so we're working backwards. So instead of going up four units, we're gonna go down four units. One, two, three, four. So we just did this step right here. Instead of going right three units, because first of all, that would take you off the grid, uh, we're gonna go left three units. One, two, Three, and then we're done. We're followed all the directions. So we're saying that this is the school. This is where she started, and this is where ugh, I'm sorry, I can't talk. And this is where she's going to end at the gym. So let's see if we can follow the directions that we were given and make this work. So she leaves school and goes four units right. One, two, three. Uh -oh, did I do something wrong here? One, two three, four. Oh, I did, I'm so sorry, boys and girls. I went the wrong way. I said right four units and it was up four units. I'm so sorry about that. I bet that was a little confusing for you guys and I'm so sorry. I did not mean to make that confusing. I got quiet for a moment because I was thinking to myself like, hold on a second. I know we worked backwards, 
the correct way. So what happened here? My apologies, boys and girls. Let's try that again. So we are checking our answer. We are starting at where we say the school is, and we are following these directions here up four units and right three units to see if we can end up at the gym. So let's go up four units. One, two, three, four. So that was up four units. Now we're going to go right three units. One, two, three, and then we ended up at the gym. So that means we do have the correct location for the school. Uh, so for part B here, I need to drag and drop my school to where it needs to be on the coordinate plane. Okay, and then we are going to enter the ordered pair for the school. So for the school, let's first find our X coordinate, go down to the X axis, and your X coordinate is three. Go across to the Y axis, your Y coordinate is two. So that gives us the ordered pair three comma two. And we're gonna type that in right here. There we go. And then when you're done, yours is going to look just like this, okay? All right, boys and girls, so let's keep on moving here. You guys are doing a great job. Let's move on to number seven. This one looks super fun because it looks very similar to a line graph, right? And we practiced line graphs last week, so we know all about those. All right, let's look at our directions. Ethan graphed the number of miles he ran each day for seven days. Place an X next to the true or false for each statement. So this X here, let's see, I feel like we should have a couple of those. Place an X next to true or false for each statement. Okay, so you're gonna need a couple of X's here. When you do the assignment, I'm going to make sure that you have uh, three different X's, okay? So you're not gonna have to worry about making your own. I'll make sure that you have enough, okay? We need three X's because we have three questions and we have to place an X in the true or fa uh, false box for each of these questions. So let's start with the first one. Ethan ran three miles on day five. Is that true? Well, my X axis is labeled as day. So let's find day five. Let's go up to the data point. And then let's see if he ran three miles on this day. Go across to the y-axis. Yes, he ran three miles on day five. That's a true statement. So we're gonna put an X right here in the box for true. Let's look at the next one. Ethan ran the least miles on day seven. So is that true? Find day seven, which is right here on the x-axis, and look at where your data point is. Did he run the least amount of miles on day seven? No, because the lowest data point that we have is day six. So he ran the least miles on day six, not day seven. That's a false statement. And then the last one, Ethan ran two more miles on day five than day six. So we are comparing those two days to, excuse me, to each other. Uh, so day five, he ran three miles. On day six, he ran zero miles. See how it's labeled right here at zero? He ran zero miles. So is it true that he ran two more miles on day five than day six? No, that is false. Because we can do three minus zero, which equals three, to find out that he actually ran three more miles on day five than day six. So that is a false statement. So we're gonna put the X here for false, okay? All right, let's keep going. Number eight, oops, sorry. All right, so this is where we're gonna start getting into um, some cardinal directions. So let's take a moment to discuss cardinal directions. You can see here that we have a compass. Cardinal directions just refers to the directions on a compass. And we're going to be using north, which means go up, south, which means go down, east, which means move to the right, and then west, which means move to the left, or yeah, the left. Okay, so we're gonna use our cardinal directions here, north, south, east, and west, instead of seeing the words up, down, left, and right. And typically, anytime you have a question where you're having to use 
these cardinal directions, like north, south, east, and west, um, the test, or let's say it's like the check-in or the EOG, they will give you an actual compass to use. So use that compass and find where north is. If north is facing upwards, then when you go north, you're going up. Same thing for the rest of them. So use that compass to know, am I going up, down, left, or right? Okay, so it says a new school is being built. Plot the location of each building. So we need to plot the cafeteria, primary, and upper. Do we need to start at the origin? Well, we're not sure. We need to read the location first and then see if we need to start at the origin. So for the cafeteria, it says four units east and one unit south of the office. So are we starting at the origin? No, we are starting at the office. So we're going to start here at the office. We're going to go four units east. That means four units left. One, two, three, four. Now we need to go one unit south. That means one unit down. Go down one. Here's where the cafeteria is going to be placed. So I'm going to put a C here and I will plot those in just a moment. But if I were a student doing this, I would be plotting them as I figure them out or at least write down the ordered pair for each one and then you can plot them all at the very end. Okay. But you don't want to get the answer and then lose your answer because you didn't write it down or something like that. All right. Primary. That's going to be two units north and three units east of the office. So again, we're leaving the office to find the primary school and here are the directions. So I'm gonna start here at the office and it says two units north, that means up. One, two. Then it says three units east, that means left. One, oops, sorry, wrong way. I went to the right. Excuse me for just a moment. Sorry, boys and girls, I'm going to start this one over really quickly, okay? All right, so let's try that one more time. So to get to the primary school, we're going to go two units north, so that means up. One, two, sorry, I had to hook my computer up to the charger, it was about to die. And then we're going to go three units east, that means we're going to go right. East points towards the right, so we're going to move to the right. So that would be one, two, three. Here is where primary is located. So I'm going to put a dot there and P for primary. All right, and then let's do the last one, upper. Now listen carefully to this one. Two units west and one unit south of the cafeteria. So this time we're actually going to start at the cafeteria. We're going to go two units west, which means to go to the left. One, two, and then we're going to go one unit south, which means go down. So down one, and here's where the upper would be located, okay? So now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and drag all of my buildings to where they need to be. So here's my cafeteria. Here's my primary. And then here's my upper. And then whenever I get this cleared off, you'll be able to see it well. So that's about what yours should look like when you're done. Uh, so office was already labeled for us. We just had to label upper, cafeteria, and primary using the directions that we were given here. Okay, let's try a few more. Number nine. So very similar situation here. I'm not going to go over all these directions again. You have the compass here. Mr. Parker is setting up his backyard. Plot the location of each item. So let's start with the swing set. It is three units south and two units east of his home. So let's start at his home. If we're going three units south, we're going down. One, two, three. Now we're going two units east. That means we're going to the right. One, two. So I'm going to put SW here for swing set. Okay, now let's do the sandbox. The sandbox is three units east and one unit south of his home. So we're gonna start at home again. We're gonna go three units east, which means we're gonna go to the right. One, two, three. Now we're gonna go one unit south, which means to go down. And this will be the location of the sandbox. So S for sandbox. Now let's do the last one, which is the trampoline. 
the trampoline is five units west of the swing set. Here's the swing set. We need to go five units west. West means to go left. So we start at the swing set. One, two, three, four, five, and here's where the trampoline will be located. Okay, now of course for you, when you're doing this on your own, make sure you put or drag these and drop them where they go. So put them where they go. Okay, that way you don't forget, or at least like we said for the last one, write down your ordered pairs so you can place them in the correct location. And then trampoline, ooh, that dot's way off, let's fix that. There we go. All right, so when I clear this, there we go, beautiful. Okay, all right, let's keep going here. We got just a couple more. I know this is a longer video, but you guys are doing great. This is all really important stuff here, okay? All right, number 10. Greg wants to draw a rectangle on the coordinate grid. Okay, so this is actually what my next video is going to get into, talking about putting shapes on a coordinate plane. Um, so I will go through number 10 and 11 here a little quickly, just because the last video covers this in more detail. Um, but I think you guys are going to do really well with this. So he wants to draw a rectangle on the coordinate grid. He's already drawn three points, A, B, and C. He's going to put point D on the coordinate plane in order to finish the rectangle. We just need to know what are the coordinates for point D. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and draw my line segments to connect the lines that I already have or connect the points that I already have. Now, if I'm wanting to make a rectangle, it's going to need to look something like this, right? So where should I put point D in order to make my rectangle? It's going to go right here. See how I can add that point there and finish making my rectangle shape? This is going to be point D. So now I just need to write the coordinates for point D. So I'm gonna start at point D. I'm gonna go down to the X coordinate. This is eight. I'm gonna go across to the Y coordinate. This is four. So point D, which finishes this rectangle here, has the coordinates eight comma four, and that point completed the rectangle. If I had put a, this point anywhere else, I wouldn't have a rectangle shape like I do here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put point D, drag and drop it where it needs to be, and I'm going to erase all of this, and then let's enter the ordered pair. So again, it was X coordinate eight, and then a Y coordinate of four. And my next video is gonna cover this in more detail, okay? So don't stress out right now thinking that you don't get it. It's okay, the next video is gonna cover it and your live math session tomorrow is gonna cover it as well, okay? All right, let's go ahead and do one more. And for this one, we're gonna be making a trapezoid. So this is gonna be another shape on coordinate plane question. Now for this one, this one's a little tricky because it's asking us to draw a trapezoid. Uh, and so I'm not quite sure what you remember about trapezoids from either the third or the fourth grade, uh, but trapezoids, they can be tricky because they actually have two different appearances. Uh, so let me read this to you and then we'll talk about it. So Rebecca wants to draw a trapezoid on the coordinate grid. She has drawn three points. So we can see them here, A, B, and C. We want to plot point D in order to finish the trapezoid and then enter the coordinates for point D. So a trapezoid, its two different appearances are like this. This is what I would call a regular trapezoid. And I'm sorry, let me draw that better. That's not very pretty. This would be what I refer to as a normal trapezoid. So it has four vertices, one right here, one right here, one right here, and then one right here. Uh, so what we know about a trapezoid is that first of all, it is a quadrilateral. That means it has four sides, okay? Now the four sides are not all the same length. They can be different lengths, but it is a quadrilateral. We also know that a trapezoid is not a parallelogram. In order for a shape to be a parallelogram, like let's say a square, it has to have opposite sides that are parallel. 
and it has to have two opposite sides that are parallel. So in this square, the top and bottom lines are what we would call parallel lines. They do not intersect and they are the same distance apart all the way through. So here, same distance apart as it is down here, okay? And then it also has another pair of parallel lines on the sides. So a square, just like a rectangle, has two pairs of parallel sides. That makes it a parallelogram. A trapezoid, on the other hand, does not. It is simply just a quadrilateral. So this is one way that a trapezoid can look. Now, if you look at the points over here, A, B, and C, they don't look like this trapezoid. Because if we go ahead and connect the lines here, look, that doesn't even look like what we have here in our trapezoid. So that must mean for this question, we are going to plot the other way that a trapezoid can look, and that's like this. So we start off with a right angle, which measures to exactly 90 degrees. Now this line that I'm drawing up is going to go higher, and then it's going to be very steep and go straight down to connect to that point right there. So we still have four sides, four vertices. So it's still a quadrilateral, and it's also still a trapezoid. A trapezoid, instead of having two pairs of parallel sides, has just one pair of parallel sides. So in this pink trapezoid here, the parallel sides or lines would be the top and bottom. The lines, if you extend them, are not going to intersect and they're the same distance apart. Same thing over here with our right trapezoid. This line and this line are parallel to each other, okay? So we have a right trapezoid. This one right here on the left is what I call a regular trapezoid. This one here on the right, this is a right trapezoid. Here, we want to make a right trapezoid. So to do that, we're gonna start here at point C, and I'm gonna draw this line about as high as I can, probably right here with a Y coordinate of nine, because that's as high as our y-axis numbers go. So I want it to get pretty high up there, okay? Then I'm going to draw a diagonal line connecting this point to point A. So this point over here that's not labeled, that's gonna be our point D. So we need to connect point D to point A with a diagonal line. And look, we have a right trapezoid, and it actually has two right angles, one here on the left, and one here on the right. Um, so typically, you know, a trapezoid's not too hard to plot when it's the regular one. Uh, when you have the right trapezoid though, first you have to remember that a right trapezoid does exist, and then secondly, you have to remember what a right trapezoid looks like, and also know that it is a quadrilateral and it only has one pair of parallel sides. Uh, so again, remember, all of that is going to be covered in the next video you watch, as well as during your live lesson today. So don't stress out too much about that. All right, so I do need to put point D on here. So I'm going to drag point D to where it goes, which is about right there. Whoops, about right there. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and clear off my coordinate grid here so you can see it better. All right, so that is point D. And then down here, we just need to type in the ordered pair for point D. So I'm going to first go to my X axis, and that X coordinate is seven. Then I go across to my Y axis, and the Y coordinate is nine. So that gives me the ordered pair, oops, there we go, seven comma nine, okay? And then we are finished. So when you're done, yours is going to look something like this. Drag point D to where it goes and then enter your ordered pair. All right, boys and girls, so we have answered all of these questions together. Uh, here in just a moment, my preference would be as soon as we finish this video, um, I want you to go ahead and complete this activity on your own. So you have an activity that looks just like this, but it has different questions, and I want you to complete that on your own. Uh, before we end this video, though, let's make sure we remember how to share our assignment with Ms. Turner. So if you complete it, but you don't share it with me, I have no evidence that you actually completed it. And then you might have to go back and do it all over again. And we don't want that to happen, right? So whenever you're done, make sure you come over here to where the share button is. You're going to click on the orange share button. And you're going to share this assignment with me. So you're going to have to type in my name, Paige 
Turner. And really, I should be probably the only name that pops up for you. Um, in case I'm not, just make sure you see this picture of me right here, as well as my email address, Paige Turner at Burke.K12, all that good stuff. Okay, so once my name pops up, you're going to click on me. Click on me. There's my name. And then you're going to click on the send button. So the send button is kind of like when you hand the teacher your worksheet, you turn your paper in. That's what you're doing here. You're turning your work in. You are sending your work to me electronically. And then I'm going to get an email that so-and-so has done the assignment. And then I'll be able to go in and see all the answers that you put and grade your work. Okay. But make sure you share it and send it with me. That's very, very important. Put your name, share it, and send it. Those are the three big things apart from actually answering all the questions. So we're going to click send. And then now your assignment is in my email and I can go and check your work and all that good stuff. Okay. All right, guys. So now that we're done with this video, head on over, do the independent assignment on your own, and then you'll have another video to watch after that. Um, and it's going to be a, a pretty quick video, um, but we're going to talk a little bit more about shapes on the coordinate plane like we did for questions 10 and 11 here, okay? All right, thank you guys for being such good listeners. I know that video was quite lengthy, um, but I definitely think it was worth our time and our practice, okay? All right, guys, so I will see you in the next video. Go do that assignment. Bye.